Welcome to Trevor Paddock. This is the preview for Manchester United versus Everton at Goodison Park. Coming up this Sunday, big game for Manchester United off the back of that nail-biting victory over Ammonia and obviously the soul-crushing defeat to Manchester City. To look forward to everything coming up in this game, all the key talking points, all the topics, is Jay Motty. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, man. I'm still... Slightly dismayed of, mm. of, of of what's gone on over the last week or so. Yeah, it's quite yeah. quite a yeah. carnage, is how I describe carnage, it. Carnage. We yeah. scored three goals in both games, and that's all that matters. Exactly. This show is also sponsored by Betmate. We'll get into them a little bit more in a little bit. Um, it has been a mad week, hasn't it? Yeah. Two games where obviously one was disastrous, one was a win, but you know some of the comments and sort of aftermath of it felt almost as though we'd dropped points, even though it was a game we largely dominated against Demonia. What do, do, how like, do you feel about this sort of? This I feel like yeah. both games, like with almost like like the ammonia game was the negative mm. of the picture of the city game. Yeah, if that makes sense, because the city game we lost, we lost badly, mm. but there was a little bit of sort of relief in the sense that we were four 0 down at one point, and we you know six one down as well, six one down sorry at one point, and it was six three, which was you know it could have been eight, it looked like it was going to be eight nil. Yeah, so it's like okay, there's a little bit. of slight, slight relief there that yeah. it wasn't the catastrophe it was shaping up to be. Then you go to the next game where it's a win away in Europe, Martial and Rashford getting goals, happy days, but you conceded two goals to one of the mm. worst sides United have ever played. And it's like, okay, neither of those games are going to tell you much and mm. do much for you. It just feels a bit weird. Yeah, it does. And it is, as it says, they're nervous times at the minute where it's like, you can't, really feel like you settled yet those four wins in a row made it feel as though united were on this kind of you know we're good now you know obviously there'll be ups and downs but but it still feels a bit like okay that was a bigger down than i, th I was expecting like i thought we if nothing else we could look solid and get you know beaten obviously because city are just at a better stage than united are but i thought maybe 2-1 two, 2-0 two, but like a sort of fighting performance Six is a lot. Six is a lot of goals. And obviously now going into this game, I think Everton are undefeated in six, four def uh, four draws in that. So it's not like they're Kane and everyone, but they're looking the best they've ever looked under Lampard. It does feel as though, you know, if they were to get the first goal, we still don't look completely settled, do we? We're completely confident. No, and I think that Rafael Varane is a big miss. And I'm going to get into predicted 11s in a, a little bit later on. We do seem to struggle a little bit when we don't have him. I know he started a derby, picked up that injury mm. as well, which led to two goals. He wasn't in there for the corner and he wasn't you know, fully able to get back and stop the, the, the pass to, to Haaland. I'm not saying I'd even fit, those goals wouldn't be scored, but you know, it contributed. There's no doubt about that. But you're right, it's, it's very difficult to, to, to know what is going on with this Manchester United mm. team. And there is a sort of a nervousness there. And there's a nervousness with the players as well, you feel, because some players have looked amazing for periods and then off the pace a little bit. Yeah. You know, we've seen it with Jadon Sancho looking really good, beginning to see, you know, the game against, um, obviously, was it Leicester who got yeah. a goal? Liverpool. Liverpool, um, away at Sheriff as well, I think. And then, you know, City, Anonymous, um, Ammonia, poor. Then you look at Malassia, who looked like, you know, the bargain of the century a few weeks ago. He was like, he was, you know, a breath of fresh air. And he's had a couple of games where he's been subbed at the mm. half hour, mark, or half hour, half time. And you think, oh, you know, what's going on here? So there just seems to be a little bit of, like you say, nervousness, not just with fans, or can't speak for any fans other than myself, but I'm a bit nervous, but it seems like some of the players are. And it's just weird to sort of know what's going to happen with this Manchester United team. At some stages, we look like we can beat anyone. Mm. You know, hand in Arsenal there, first on their only points dropped at Old Trafford. And then other times we look like, you know, we're struggling to beat a team that was ranked 242nd in, in the world in yeah. Ammonia. So, yeah, it's all a bit bizarre. You see there, obviously, the last five results, it is this sort of up, down, up, down, up, down. And, you know, it does feel as though we're sort of better off than we were last season, certainly. But it's still just, we're still getting there. Someone, I, I want to move on, actually, because you can see him up there on the, on the, the screen. Anthony Martial, who hasn't started a game yet for Manchester United, I believe is United's second top goal scorer this season with three goals. Um, has got three goals uh, and two assists, I think, or three goals and an assist in, uh, what, 130 minutes for Manchester United this season? Right, okay. Stunning numbers, basically, for minutes. No one's getting minutes near numbers like that anywhere else in the Premier League. Certainly not in Manchester. No. Um, but basically, he's been very effective in this system so far in the very fleeting times we've seen him. 
this front, th like, he needs to fit in somewhere. And then Anthony's been pretty good. And Rashford's obviously, he's got a start. But then Ronaldo's there, Sancho's there. Like, there's a lot to think about here. This front three is underperforming in some areas. You know, it's, it's, what, what, should, what do you make of all this? Because Ten Hag's got a big decision to make here for the next sort of run of games, hasn't he? I think, honestly, this is one of the easiest decisions he's got to make. Do you think? I honestly do. I think that the, the, the way the players have been playing, the, the things he said as well, you know, that what he says doesn't make his decision easier, but it indicates what, his way of thinking. Yeah. I think Marcus Rashford is our top goal scorer. You know, five goals and three assists or whatever it is. In eight games. In eight games. Great yeah. numbers. Brilliant. Not going to A goal, a goal uh, involvement every game. Fine. Yeah. You know, no one's, no one's deserves to be dropped for that. His best position for me will always be on the left-hand side of a front three. Anthony Martial has looked like the Anthony Martial that we saw a few seasons ago under Ole, down that middle. Yeah? yeah. He's confident on the ball. He's making goals happen. He's creating goals. He's, you know, he's... he's holding up the ball, he's bringing in others. He's just what you want. And that finish against, against Demonia as well was from outside the 18-yard box. Yeah. He didn't feel like he has to take it too close. He's literally just, foot, you know, head up, strike it into the bottom corner. It's the, it's the, the type of shot that you only take when you're confident because otherwise you try and take an extra touch. Let me get in the box first. Let me do. He's just seeing the opportunity. Oh, near post is open here. Yeah. Just sort of pass it into the bottom corner. Perfect. He's, he's clearly playing with confidence. And he's playing with that energy that you always want. There's, there's these little slight question marks about Andy Marshall is like, is he really fully into this at United? Is he really, you know, yeah. I'm not saying that I've thought that, but when you see criticism of him, people look at his body language and they go, is he up for it? Is he keen? Especially over the last couple of seasons yeah. where he just looks like he's just, even by his own standard, because sometimes he, he wears a bit of a scowl, which is nothing wrong with that. But people go, you know, does he really feel it here at Manchester United anymore? But it's quite indicative, you know, when he got that goal against City, the first goal he got, and he's grabbing the ball and he's yeah. running back. Now, all right, it's a bit comical. I think that was made it, what, 6-2 or whatever. Yeah. You know, we were never back in it, but that eagerness, that keenness to come on, let's keep going. That's what we've got to see because ability-wise, there's no questions there. And Eric Tanag seems to be getting the best out of him. If he's fit, and it looks like he's fit now, then yep, him down the middle, Anthony, no brainer. He's come in, he's scoring goals in the Premier League. It costs 100 million euros. You ain't dropping him. Mm. So I think that despite the fact that I like Jaden Sancho, obviously, you know, we all love Cristiano Ronaldo, those two players have more question marks around them at the minute than any of the other front three. The front three of Martial, Anthony, and Marcus Rashford, are scoring and creating goals, and the other two, not to that extent, not to no. the extent you want. No, I think it's it's got to be. I mean, on, on that note, let's move on to predict elevens. Um, I'll go first because obviously we've we've kind of heard um, some of your opinions there, and I, and I'm sure our teams will be pretty similar. I've gone um, what seems to be the strongest available back five. Um, actually, sorry, there is one tweak in there. Luke Shaw in for um, Malassia. Like you mentioned, he's been subbed off at 45 minutes for the last two games. That's a sign that something's not right. And, and uh, Ten Hag praised Luke Shaw uh, when, uh, after Ammoni. He said about how the Martial, Rashford and Shaw all made a big difference when he came on. He said the subs were, were very impressive and they helped the, the uh, United sort of turn the game around. Um, and I think, you know, he wasn't great against City, I didn't think Shaw, but neither was Malassia. Maybe it's time to give Malassia a minute to go, uh, you know, you've been great. Things are just sort of tripping up a little bit. Let's give you five, you know, five minutes. Bring Luke Shaw back in, and let's, you know, get back on the training pitch, and we'll bring you uh, Malasia into the starting eleven when he's kind of got over this little spell that he's going through. But I think that's probably the right thing to do. Also, again, I've put McTominay in over Casemiro because whilst McTominay was pretty shit against City, so was everyone else, and Casemiro once again against Demonia was too inconsistent for me. Like, uh, uh, some of it is he needs games to, to get up to the speed of things. But on the other hand is when he's playing games, he's not playing very well. So can you let him cost you goals in the meantime while you're waiting? Some of it he has to kind of bring himself. So, you know, it might have to be another one off the bench. Obviously, there's five subs now. So I think the the sort of in, the incident rate of half-time subs is only going to go up um, in football generally as we get used to the sort of five subs uh, rule. So maybe bring Casemiro on for the second half if United are winning. But I think... A bad game against uh, Man City when everyone else had a terrible game wouldn't shouldn't be enough to drop Cas uh, McTominay for Casemiro on current form. I don't, unfortunately. Right, so, uh, we'll get to Man City in a minute. I'll go um, on to that. I'm get to I've kept Eriksen in as well, who again was probably one of United's worst players against City. I thought it just was the game just passed him by completely and I think he's been sensational for United this season so it pains me to say that. And then, like you said, Bruno has to play because who else? And then that front three that you've mentioned, I think it at least to give it a go, that picks itself this weekend. Like yeah. Anthony uh, is, 
United's most dangerous player in the second half against City. United's most dangerous player in the first half against Demonia. He's got to start. And then, like I said, Rashford and Martial goes without saying that those two are starting over their alternatives at the minute. Who Ronaldo, who it almost looked like sort of make a wish foundation. Let's get him a goal. Let's, you know, let's get a tap in from him. He still couldn't do it um, against Demonia. He's going through a terrible time. One that I think is worse than his actual sort of, you know, some people saying, oh, he's done, this is just how bad he'll be forever. I think he's in a bad run of form and his body isn't quite what it was. Um, and obviously Sancho just doesn't seem to be getting in amongst it at the moment. I think that front three picks itself. Yeah, I agree. I agree with the front three anyway. My team, yeah. going to my team, is slightly different. Um, back five, I think it's the same. I've brought in Casemiro. Right. I think the, the, the sort of, when I say long term, I mean, eventually this season, Casemiro starts for United. Medium term. Medium term, yes, thank you. Um, I do, and yeah. I think this might be the time to start him. I get your, your argument that he hasn't been great when he's coming because he hasn't. He's been decent in patches and, and not so great in others. I just feel like this could be the ideal time for him to to, to sort of stake a, a claim. Mm. Play him in ninety minutes for ninety minutes in a Premier League game, and this is going to be a tough game. I yeah. think he can. I think he can handle it. Yeah. Everton have got a decent midfield. They're not unbeatable. It's not like you're going up against, you know, like it was against City, where you've got like De Bruyne and Silva and players like that. You've got to use it at Wolby and, and players of that ilk. They're, they're, they're all right. Yeah. But I think that Casemiro can handle it. Yeah. And I think that that midfield three would work. I think sooner or later, I see Casemiro coming in. I just feel it might Me be too. now. Because I think that you're right. Scott McTominay had the four good games. He didn't play the first half against Brentford, did he? He didn't play very well against Brighton. So he sort of turned yeah. it around for those four wins. Um, bit of a bad one against Manchester City. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel that sooner or later, Casemiro is going to start that. for Manchester yeah, United. Yeah, I do agree with that. And whilst I picked um, McTominay, that is almost more because of Casemiro just failing to really impress me, to be yeah, honest. No, I just think he's been okay. But like like I said before, at some point he's going to get in the team, I think. Yeah. And also, to get him up to speed, he needs to play 90 minutes in the Premier League. So maybe he will do that, and that wouldn't surprise me either. But very similar teams there. The one thing I will say about Casemiro as well is, I noticed it when it was, I think it was the Arsenal game, when he was warming up and he was shouting and chatting to players as they were taking throw-ins or waiting, getting mm. a water break. He's like a coach. Mm. He is, he's, he's in people's ears all the time. He's talking to him. The listening, you can mm. see the listening. This is one of the most successful footballers in the history of the game. Um, and I think you need players like that in certain games. This could be a game where you need, I know McTominay has certain leadership qualities, but I think Casemiro's different gravy. Yeah. I think that might, you know, this is predicted, might sway every time I was thinking, but you wouldn't be surprised either way, would you? Because no. it's, again, it's close margins. Uh, no, uh, definitely not. Um, let's move on to the opposition then and Betmate, of course, today's show sponsor. Now, if you don't know what Betmate is, Betmate is a fantasy football app where you pick your favourite or most point scoring capable seven players you can from any given fixture and they will score you points up against other people playing the app and we have uh, a, a league each week we've both joined um uh, you can win points win money it's good in it yeah it's good i mean you know it's a, quite a rarity for things like this when i do fantasy football yeah. i'm usually shambolic but i've actually done all right i've done quite well this season which is you know it's strange for me because it's not just with better mate it's not just goals and assists which is good mm. it's powered by opta so things like interceptions and tackles do count as well you know because you're getting them up to stats it's all you know Top tier yeah. statisticians. You know it's coming from the right source. It is, and you can play, like say, you can play it in a league against your mates, yeah. it's a bet mate, or you can play against others. It's, you know, there's, there's something for everyone. Let's have a look at your team, though. What are yeah. you going for? Um, my team, you can see here, um, I've gone with, so obviously you pick a team of seven, mm -hmm. it's seven aside. You can only pick six players from one team. So I've gone Pickford in goal. Mm. I have to pick one Everton player in my uh, starting lineup. Interesting that you've gone with a goalkeeper. Yeah. When presumably you think we're going to win and score loads of goals, why pick a goalkeeper? Um, I've. I just feel like it might be closer than um, lots of goals. I do. Mm. So yeah, and also, you know, you just don't know with Pickford. He, he might get a goal himself. Mm. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Comes yeah. up late on for a corner to get the consolation goal yeah. in a five-one win. Yeah, <laughs> seems unlikely, doesn't it? Um, um, rest of the team, then talk me through it. Yeah, Martinez loves a tackle. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to score soon as well, Martinez. Yeah, the low, you know, likes getting forward, puts a foot in. You know, is capable of getting uh, down the business end of the pitch. Fernandez and Eriksson, enough said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Assists or goals. Eriksson's not scored yet for us, has he? No. 
he's another one who's he's due on, isn't it? And Marshall and Rashford, they're on fire. And then, you know, the bench is just a load the of The bench is the bench. I Let's put James Garner in there because that seems to where he occupies now, doesn't he? He's moving to Everton to sit on their bench. Well, it's better than him sitting on our bench. Really? No, Wasn't I it? wish you were sitting on our bench. <laughs> um, okay, let's have a look at my team then. Um, and this, obviously, well, I say obviously, £5 entry gets you the chance to win a pot of £1,000. I think we had a big was it, boy. It was it a, big a few boy. weeks ago, was it Cal? Yes. Um, it was a big winner. He won, um, I think he won like, 199 quid. Yeah. Sorry, isn't it? On his first time playing the first game. First time player, 199 yeah. quid, you make me I've sick, gone Cal. slightly different here, Jay. Go on. De Gea in the net, because I trust United not to fucking concede, and I think we're going to score, putting Pickford in the net, like we're not going to score six goals. Okay. I've gone with Dallow, I've gone with Martinez, same thing. The rest of it, very similar. Marshall, Rashford speaks for itself, Bruno Fernandes. But I've put Alex Iwobi in there, who is averaging, I think, um, over the last five games, the most of anyone in that Everton team. Right, okay. See what I mean? He got nine points last week, I think. Mm -hmm. Not bad, is it? So's Mr. So get research. him in, and he can have a good game without actually scoring any goals, and we can still beat him and still get extra points. Simple. It's that simple. Uh, make sure you use the referral code PADDOCK5, and you'll get a, fee, a free £5 bet when you enter any paid pot. So that is code PADDOCK5, as you can see on the screen there, and you get a free £5 bet when you enter any paid pot on BetMate. Download the app, check it out. Make sure to check out BetMate. I'm beating you this week. Bring I'll be honest, on. I've on, struggled mate. so far. Yeah. You You've, struggled. You, you're doing well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this you're idea. hand over fist. Loads of United players. I know, it's good. Do you know what it? I mean? I'm, I'm a big fan of that, and I just stick it, you know, an opposition player in. And I've backed a few ones that have done all right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Who was it I backed to? Um, who, who scored for us in that first game? For United? Yeah, against Brighton. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Was it Bruno? Was it Sancho? No idea. Absolutely no idea. Um, just quickly before we move on. I, can't, um, I was at the game and I can't, re I can't remember. Against Brighton? Against Brighton. Who know. scored for us? No that's idea. really, that's really. I mean, you'd hope it, producer Ethan was searching for this quickly and he could tell us who it is. Any luck? Hope springs eternal with him. Um, he's looking. Man United versus Brighton 2 1 and click on it. Yeah, he's, oh, he's looking now. He's there looking there now. Oh, right. Looking. He's, he's actually started looking now. Thanks, Ethan. Sorry, Everyone wait. at home is screaming Sorry to into wait, their like dogs. McAllister scored an own goal. That's why I couldn't remember it, because it was an yeah. own goal. There you go. So, yeah, Attention. I can't remember how I did well that game then. Yeah. <laughs> you picked oh, no, I know what it was. It's the Brentford game I picked Ben May. Well, there we go. And so a different goal, different game. game. Yeah, different Good team. stuff. But that's, different person. That, that goes to show the mind at work here. And that is the mind that is winning cash week in, week out with Bentmate. Um, just quickly on, on Everton. Is Lampard doing a good job? Yes. Do you think? This season, yeah. I, mean, I think look at the resources he's got. This season, he's doing all right. Mm. Last season, they were awful. But he also inherited a sinking ship. Mm. They were plummeting under Rafa Benitez. And he also offloaded Lucas Digne to Villa as a sort of parting shot. Well, mm. just before he left. Um, and then Lampard came in, couldn't really get that bounce that he needed. They had a few good results. And then just towards the end, they picked up enough points to get themselves out of, tr out of trouble. Um, this season, they have had a lot of draws. I know they're in this season, six games unbeaten. I think four of them have been draws. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you look at it like a, a point against Liverpool, for example, it's not anything to shout um, to, you know, to, to shout about, but it's, it's not too shabby. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they've had a couple of decent ones, you can see there, you know, um, big win at Southampton, a decent win at home to Everton, and then those draws, I think I think you can say it's it's been a, a pretty decent run. Mm. Um, and I think if you look at... To be fair for them, getting a draw at Liverpool or against Liverpool yeah. is basically a win as well, isn't yeah. it? When you look at the history of that... Well, that's the most one-sided derby ever. And I think as well, you look at... When I look at Everton on paper, yeah. I'm massively underwhelmed. You no, know, Dwight McNeil had one assist, I think, in 40 games or something, or 38 games for Brit Burnley. Yeah. And, and, you know, why did he bought him? I'll never know. But then I think he scored the other week. Do you know what I mean? And you look at Neil Mopai, who's, I think he scores eight, he scores eight goals a season. That's his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he scored the winner, I think, against West Ham. Yeah. So he's getting a tune out of these players. Even Alexi, uh, Alex Iwobi, sorry, who is a player who's often sort of just ridiculed. Yeah. Oh, Iwobi, oh, he's awful, this, that, and the other. He's, he seems to be playing better. Also, what, teams, what's mad time, is sorry. he's gone full Joe Linton. 
These are like sort of big, bulky strikers that don't ever score goals who yeah. now play as central midfielders yeah. and look sort of reinvented. So he yeah. looks he looks much better. Like he's basically playing almost like a defensive midfielder now. Yeah. When when two years ago he was just a number nine. So yeah, he's definitely doing something. And it as much as it pains me to say it because I, I still think he's a bit of an average manager. Some decent results there. Move with that in mind. Give us your score prediction because you were saying before you don't think it's going to be an easy one. I think it might be a one nil. Mm. which won't do my nerves any good. We're talking about nerves at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, I, I'll go 1-0, maybe Anthony Martial. I, I'm much more confident than that. Go on, my son. I think get Martial in that starting lineup, get a bit of defensive solidity, even if we see Casemiro and McTominay. Yeah. I'm not sure, but you know, just stop conceding goals. I think we're going to score a couple, though, but I'll go 3-1 United. Yeah, I think we. I can't see us not conceding because we concede every week at the minute. But I think we're going to get a few in. So three one, three one. Uh, don't forget as well. People mm. sending their score prediction mm. to paddockmatchday at gmail dot com. Did I get that right? Yeah, it's only taken me about two and a half years. Send start. us your score predictions as well because we want to hear from you guys, man. We want to hear what you think. Let us know. Just film it on your phone in landscapes. Send it to that email address I'm just giving you. Let us know your score predictions. Throw in the scorers as well if you want. We want to hear from you guys. It's your channel, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, make sure you check out the rest of the channel as well. Check out The Brew as well with Stephen House and, and Jay Moy. And check out the watch along for the Everton game. Me, Jay, and special guests on that one as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in a bit. <laughs>